Welcome to my channel, Prove with John. Today we're going to go through uh, what I tend to do in all my equipment is uh, I call it a paint touch up at the end of the season. Uh, what I do is I take the, uh, after the snow's gone, there's always a bit of a salt residue on the machine. I take it, and you take a garden hose, I always use a pressure washer. Because the snow leg, when the plow goes by, it takes all the road salt that's been put on the road and puts it in a big leg in front of your driveway. And you come along with your snowblower and you blow it. Well, that splashes, like it comes over here, it gets all inside the seams, it gets blown all over the machine, the engine, every piece of metal, then you put it away. And it's not too bad in the wintertime when it's cold. It doesn't rust as quickly, it still rusts. But when you leave it there all summer and you get those hot, humid days, that salt just eats away at the paint and any little flag, it just keeps getting bigger, bigger, bigger. And uh, the humid days gets into the salt and stays wet all the time. So therefore, salt, wet, oxygen, metal. I wash it all and I go around with a paint. I, of course, color match. I had to get this one color matched, which the coat on this one is right here. I pick it up Benjamin Moore and I brought a piece in, and they uh, put it over there. They scanned it, and they color matched it, and that's the color right there, which is pretty close. I think it's bang off. Inside here where your auger and impeller turns, and paint always gets scraped off there every year, but if you turn around and you paint in there, keep that nice clear paint shiny and do it every year, uh, you're going to get a lot less clogging, especially when you get that damp snow. It's going to be nice and smooth. Okay, as you can see down here, a lot of flaking paint. So, in here too, it's all filling up. So, I'm going to be using, get rid of the rough stuff, just a scraper to scrape it, the uh, heavy stuff off. From there, I'll take the uh, Milwaukee drill and I'll just put on just some wire reels, different different versions of it, and just clean it up a bit. In really bad areas, I'll use the uh, core seal. It's a rust converter, and then, or before I do that, because there might be a bit of grease here and there, I'll just clean it up with some acetone. Core seal and then of course the paint. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to cover the metal back up so it doesn't continue rusting because if you leave that go, eventually that hole's gonna get bigger, it's gonna get bigger up here. Anyway, uh, in a few years time, it just rusts away, it looks bad. And like I say, as soon as you put a coat of paint, once you, if you do this every year, you do it from new, you just have to put a little touch up paint on here and there, like I've been doing over there. On this one here, I just use trim clad red, and I just go and I just keep touching up the areas. And I've had that many, many years. Yeah, one thing that I forgot to mention earlier is uh, the comparison on these two snowblowers. Like I say, this one is uh, 12 or 15 years old now, and you can see there's no rust anywhere on it. It's been looked after, it's been washed at the end of every season, and it's been, paint's been touched up on it. And this one here has been used for five years. It's never been washed, it's never been touched up. And this is a perfect example, because these two snowblowers, four houses away, or four or five, yeah, five houses away, roughly, same size driveway and same conditions because I say the, the houses are five doors away, five, drive, five driveways up the street. So when you look after something, after 15 years or 12 years, it's going to look like this. If you don't, it would have looked like this. This one here, well, still got a bit more work to do to it. It's not going to be as good, but it's not going to get any worse. If you do a little bit of preventative maintenance by washing, a little bit of paint touch up, 
You can't compare anything better than this. Five driveways away, same area, same neighborhood, same weather. Okay, I cleaned it up best I could. Uh, this should be fine right over without putting the, uh, the core seal on. The core seal would take another 24 hours to dry, and it's a water-based product anyway, so uh, I'm going to go with the, the paint right on top. Like I said, I'm not trying to make, if you look at it, I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just trying to cover the metal so it doesn't continue rusting further. Anytime I open paint, because this paint's going to be kicking around for quite a while, because it's basically for this snowblower, I'm going to take a nail and just along the edge of the can, I'm going to put a bunch of holes in it. Why? I put the holes in it so any paint that gets around here, when you put the lid on, it's not going to hold the lid up. It's going to push through and it's going to seal. If I find if you don't do it, you get a bit of paint in that lip, then the next time, the following year, you're going to use a can, the paint's all got a great big hard skim on top of it. I'm going to find if I do this, I never had an issue with that. Like I say, it doesn't create a hydraulic lock. It's a, Lid's going down. How many coat? I don't know. I'll wait and see. Looks like it's going to take a couple. I'll just put the first coat on pretty thin. It is a good match, but I can say it's going to take a couple coats over this. Okay, so right now I've got two coats on the underside. I'm going to go with three, but before I... It's oil day, so it takes a long time to dry. Uh, before I put another coat under here, I'm going to bring it down and put a coat on the inside. It takes uh, about eight hours uh, before it's dry enough to get another coat on. That's just so it doesn't fall this way. It's kind of on a tipping point. No, I just get in here and I'm just gonna scrape off all the loose paint that's in there. A lot of times compressed air gets underneath the paint flakes and takes it out. Yeah, I got quite a few flakes out, but it's gonna take a while, so. I'll be back. I'm just going to scrape more, grind some out. Okay, this is what I got scraped off so far. Uh, in order to get it uh, proper, you would have to dis dismantle the entire thing. But uh, the goal here, for one, is never let it get this far. Uh, do it on a yearly basis. And kind of prevention right now is to stop it from going any further. But you basically have to do a touch-up once a year and if you do it once a year it takes you what, 15 minutes maybe a half hour and you're done because uh, the rust doesn't start spreading like it has all along here all in there all on the seams all on the back side so if you keep up with it it's really quick just before you put it away like I say pressure wash it let it dry Go around with the, uh, there's no scraping, there's no nothing, just go around with the uh, paintbrush and touch it all up. Yeah, so I'm not cleaning the paintbrush constantly uh, because I, underneath, it takes a day and then a few coats in between. So I don't want to clean the paintbrush all the time, so I just put it inside of a plastic bag and throw it in the freezer and you take it out, it's not it's going to be frozen because it is an old base paint. But it saves you, when you're doing a job like this, it's going to take over a long period of time. Uh, every coat is eight hours. I just wrap it up in plastic and throw it in the freezer. That way I'm not going through different brushes or I'm not going through cleaning it all the time. Okay, as you can see, I've got three coats on the underside where all the paint was peeled and rust started in the back cover. 
and I got uh, two coats on the uh, front side, so the back, three coats is good enough. I'd say this machine, this machine was really, really rough shape. It's hard to tell until you start getting into it. You see all the bubbles everywhere and you got to peel them all up and scrape it down. Anyway, before I put this back together, I'm just going to put any C's on all the uh, bolts that hold the bottom cover on the bottom. Stop it from rusting further. This video is not about the service. Uh, like I say, uh, up here, the link for the uh, full service would be up here. This is just what should be done every year. Take the back cover. I had paint on the inside of this too, it was rusted everywhere. Now you notice here, take a look down here. Before you flip it up like that, you always got to make sure there's no oil in the engine or it starts leaking in the cylinder and block up. Always make sure you put your no oil sign on so you don't forget. So this particular paint job has been going on for, I'd say, a week. Because you got to put a coat on, you got to let it dry, put it on, and if you forget, and you go to start it or give it back to the customer with no oil, yeah, not good. Anyway, so we're going to lift this up and we're going to do the last the watch doesn't flip backwards on you. on a very tipping point. I put another jack on this side just so it doesn't fall over backwards. Right there, can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere. So one more coat on the inside and then I'm done. Uh, before I go any further I'm gonna get the, uh, the skids back on. I took these off to paint it so No. I don't know, I should have put it on the ground and adjust it. I should have put it on this. Let's get it started so I can adjust it once. Pressure off of this, so when it sits flush, it sits on the, uh, the skids, not the metal. I took one of them and I cut it so I get in the small areas. Like so I buy these in the temp tag. I guess you can buy the brush ones, but. First ones may work better, may not, I don't know. I just buy these for all touch up. I've been doing that for a while, but this one I just took the scissors and cut it down because this was just getting too wide for the smaller spots. Anyway, so I'm going to get on to the last coat of the touch up. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, this video is basically about the importance of a little bit of touch up paint and show you what happens when you don't do it. You dance your conclusion. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, okay. I just want to show you the importance of doing a bit of touch up, washing machine before you put it away. You can see the uh, comparison between one that has been done for years and one that hasn't. This one, I'd say another 
if this in 10 years this thing would have been rusted really bad to a point if you want to salvage it you're gonna to have to sandblast it it was almost at that point uh, I did the best I can if let's like say it would have been done at the start it would have been a lot easier there'd be no rust anywhere so anyway anything I use I will put a uh, link in the description uh, the paint I did get at Benjamin Moore for a full service on this particular snow blower be in the, the little thing this little link that's up here anyway if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell thanks for watching my channel bye for now